Hey girls and girls, my name's Dan, welcome back to The Forge. In this episode of Trust Me, I'm a blacksmith. Let's make this skeleton bottle opener and the tools to make it. So in today's video, I'm gonna go through making these punches. This might be two videos. It's, it might be more than 20 minutes. I'm trying to keep the videos under 20 minutes. It might be more than 20 minutes. Uh, so, um, I'm gonna go through making these, uh, a little chisel, a little like center dot. I keep calling it a center punch in here, and then this small fuller to make this bottle opener, last bottle opener, I promise. Well, for a while anyway, I'm not gonna make any more bottle openers for a while, but I'm also gonna give this bottle away, bottle opener away at the end of the video, so if you wanna find out how to win it, come over to the end of the video and see it. Anyway, I think there's a lot to go through today in this episode, so I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna let you enjoy the video and I will see you on the other side. So what we've got here is my prep bar stock to make the punches, um, a center punch, um, a small chisel, and also a, um, a like a fullering tool. That's gonna to help us make some of the details on our bottle opener. Uh, these are, this is forklift truck tine. Uh, this forklift truck tine has been, um, uh, it's some of the stuff that's left over from when I make, uh, prep some of the uh, tine for tongs. Uh, so it's the bit that'll get cut off. It won't quite make one half of a set of tongs. It won't quite make a punch, but it will, get turned into 16 mil or uh, 5 eighths uh, uh, octagon stock. Uh, it just so happens that I had a piece and it had a bit of square bit on the end and then it went into octagon. You don't have to do this. I thought that looked quite attractive um, as for something to hold, maybe not very comfortable, but um, I hope it's gonna look quite good. Um, like I said, you're not gonna gain anything by having the square there, it might be uncomfortable, uh, but these are going to become our punches and so on. Um, you can use a piece of 16 mil round um, or 5 eighths round bar. Um, I would suggest something with a reasonable carbon content. We are going to be heat treating these at 4140, uh, 1040 or a 1050, something like that. Um, what you want is a, is a material that's going to take impact quite well. This fork truck tine is great for taking impact. It also works quite well uh, because you can water and oil quench this stuff. So um, it does give you different hardnesses, but in the data sheets for this boron, which this stuff's made out of, uh, you can get quite good results if you, uh, if you wanted to water quench it. Right, so the uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the center punch. Uh, basically, I'm gonna draw this down into a taper, an octagon taper, uh, and then I'll probably just grind that into shape. I'm not gonna do anything to the heads, I'm just gonna grind them in. Uh, this one I'm gonna forge into a chisel. I'm just gonna bring a little chisel point out there, and then this one here I'm gonna do almost exactly the same as a chisel, except from a little bit slightly longer, uh, and leave it a little bit fatter so I can put a radius on to make our little foot. A little bit warm here, but our first job is to put a four-sided taper on. Uh, I'm gonna put, it doesn't matter really, um, I'm gonna put the four-sided taper on. Using the bit to start with. And this is just gonna give us a little bit of an increase in PSI. I'm using the round side of this hammer. Okay, and I'm just gonna come onto the anvil face. Notice how I'm keeping this on my hip. Just taking this square. a bit cold but what we're looking for is a nice even taper. Uh, I'm going to put this back in the fire and I'm just going to dress up this taper and then I'll show you what up. So nice and warm again um, and basically what we're doing is just forging this nice even four sided square taper and I'm working down the length of the uh, taper here and all I'm trying to do is just keep it nice and square nice and tidy and as I get to the end of the tape I just bring it over to the anvil just so that my hammer can fall off the anvil so don't glide in that banging that hammer into the anvil
Okay, I'm still keeping you nice and close there so you can see what I'm doing exactly. Um, got a bit distracted by the camera and burnt that a bit, but now what I'm doing is I'm taking the corners off of the four uh, of the square taper. Now, what we'll have, what we want to have, it's a bit cold now. Is eight even what we need now is eight even uh, um, uh, triangles going down they might not be triangles they might be uh, rhombuses but what we need is eight even triangles running down the length of the um, the taper okay, so uh, another thing that's happened here is that we've come a little bit out of alignment, but what I, all I'm doing is forging these tapers in so that they give me even triangles down each side. And now I'm just centering this up because. like this in the middle, if preferable. I'm just blending everything in. Now it's very important that the taper at the top here, this taper up here, matches um, that they're all the same size. If they're different sizes, you'll get these little divots form when you come to finally make your uh, punch round. Right, okay, chisel. So for this one, I just want to taper down two sides. And again, I'm using the bic, and I'm just trying to get a bulk of material moved to start with. Now I personally want to keep chisel the same width as the starting stop, so that's 16 mil or 5 eighths. That's a bit cold back in the fire. Okay, and same as before. Keeping that tight on my hip and holding the work just off the edge of the anvil. That allows me to drop the hammer face just over the edge of the just off the edge of the anvil so I don't collide with the anvil. Just tidy this up so that we've got a nice taper. And also, like I said before, I want to keep this flat. I don't want this bit any bigger than 16 or 5 eighths. So that's our taper so far. I don't know if you can see that very well. So our taper so far. Flat face there. Right, I, uh, I'm going to encourage this little taper out just a bit more. I'm going to use the bick again, uh, and then uh, I think now we're pretty much done with that. Nice, easy one. Try and give you a nice close-up again. Just using that bick to help promote that forward movement. And then coming to the edge here. Again, just tidying everything up, making it all look nice and smart, trying to keep those angles consistent. Back in the fire. Okay, and once again, all I'm going to do now is just tidy everything up. 
make everything nice and square. Finishing that taper off nicely. And whilst you're learning to do this, it doesn't matter if, uh, if you have to pop over to the grinder to get everything nice and tidy. We all make mistakes, we all have to learn. Um, but I do encourage the practice of this. I'd rather that uh, you spent, you know, 20 minutes extra trying to get this looking like the, the punch that I've just made, as opposed to, or chisel, or as opposed to grinding it into shape. Uh, it is quicker, and uh, it can be much more rewarding. Right, there's two. So basically, I'm gonna do this exact same one again, but this time I'm gonna do it uh, so it's a bit shorter, so that first taper that we made. Uh, I'm not gonna hammer this home too much, but, um, but uh, I'm using this round side of this hammer uh, in combination with a bick, and I'm slightly holding this up at a slight angle in order to get the, uh, the shape that I want. I'm just gonna grab my work from the fire. Using the round face, I'm just gonna Couple of blows, turn it over. Couple of blows, turn it over, and I'm I'm just trying to keep a little bit of consistency between the amount I'm forging. And now I'm just going to come here onto the bit, uh, onto the face, oh, the bit, just come off the bit. Bring this down flat. Too cold and put that back in the fire. Whilst I wait for the, um, the punches to cool down, let's have a little bit of a chat about what we're gonna do to punch the hole for the bottle opener. Now, in the other two videos I made, um, I, uh, I didn't punch the hole. One was a wrap and the other one was a bend, and they uh, successfully gave me uh, the hole I required. This one, we're gonna use a slitting punch. This is a slitting punch. It's, uh, it's um, an eight-sided uh, starting stock and then it comes down to a taper, a little bit like um, a sort of a cross between the punch, uh, the, the center punch and uh, the chisel. And at the end it has, um, has a very thin slit like this one here. Uh, and that allows us to um, remove the smallest amount of material, giving us the greatest amount of swell when we put these drifts through, hang on a second, I'm grab one, when we run these drifts through in combination with this bolster, so this drift fits through there nicely. That'll give us a nice round 16 mil hole, which I'll be able to slide over the end of the bick. Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is also just quickly mark this up just before we start forging. Now, I want to find the center of this bar. This is um, 25 by eight millimeter mild steel bar, or um, inch, by five sixteenths. So I'm just gonna sort of roughly guess the middle here because um, it's, sometimes it's easier just to work off by eye. I'm not quite the middle, almost. There we are. Now, what I wanna do is come the material thickness away from the end of the bar. So um, this is eight mil thick or uh, five sixteenths. So what I'm gonna do is just line this up here and I'm gonna give me a little mark at uh, 5 sixteenths or eight millimeters, near enough. One, one is the same as much. Um, and I'm just gonna take my center punch and I'm gonna line him up just there. 
and give them a little tap with hammer. And then I'm gonna take this, which is my, uh, my slitter. And basically what we're aiming to do, hopefully, is line the back side of the center punched mark up with the cutting side of the um, slitting punch. And this will give us enough material to stretch this into the ring for our bottle opener, he says, fingers crossed. Um, more material on the end of your bar is gonna work better, but uh, it's up to you. A bit more work if you leave more material on. Okay, so I'm gonna come out of the fire and lose my hammer. Find that center dot mark that I put on. I'm gonna come from one side, I'm gonna lay the back of the punch into the hole, and then I'm gonna look here to see if we're straight. Do a little tap, and it looks pretty good to me. There we are, not bad. So we're pretty much all the way through. Put the anvil on the other side, I can feel it. I'm gonna turn it round, so sometimes you can see a little shadow. Give it one little tap, turn it back over. Give it a tap again, and then when you turn it back over, you should, if you've got it in the middle, flatten that bit out. I haven't, I need to move over ever so slightly. There we are, it's better, much better. Now, a lot of people are gonna tell you, it's too cold, get it hot. Um, but you won't necessarily get the shearing qualities you like. Uh, if you heat stuff up on thin material like this. So, also this is a H13 punch, so it gives me the advantage I can get a bit of a get of abuse on it. But the material that we've got in the hole there now is quite thin. And I'm just gonna continue to work it backwards and forwards until it surrenders. Um, you, can, you can do this over a hole. I find it bends the material a little bit. Um, if you work it backwards and forwards and careful not to slam it into your anvil, you'll get your slug. I've got a bit of material there that I'm going to get rid of. I just hit the anvil there, I don't know if you heard that. Right, got my material out of the way. And we've got a little hole. Okay, this is where you need about 19 billion hands and this is a touch on the cold side, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this drift up roughly in the middle. start sending it through the hole. Now what two things I want to look out for is I've actually hit the bolster there. Um, I've done this deliberately because I want to show you something. Um, that can damage the drift and it's also going to lock your material into your work. So you want to stop when you hear a change. You'll hear that this sounds a bit more solid when that happens. So I'm going to release that now. And the other thing is if you're not careful you can start pulling Material through. I'm just going to hammer that flat. Now my next hit, I'm going to go through the other side. Now after saying what I just said about locking the punch into the bolster plate, some of you are going to say, well, why not just use the biggest hole available? And the reason is, you'll get a lot of you'll get a lot of material drag through if you use um, if you use too small of a hole. Okay, last heat. Just gonna get that between my legs. Take this lot of script. All the way through. Okay, next job is to put these corners in. I need to get this as hot as possible in order to succeed at getting these corners in. Okay, so I've got this material nice and hot, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it over the bit of the anvil, and I'm going to forge the corners in. And then coming back. Back here, back up to the, uh, the ring. I'm going to start forging this around the bit. Now that I've got the corners in nicely, 
I'm going to start forging 180 degrees round. I'm just going to leave this top bit, it's a bit thin. Just going to ignore that top bit for a minute. So I've done both sides now. And I'm gonna have to get this hot again. So again, I'm just gonna go all the way around. I'm gently dressing up now, going all the way around to one side using that horn, the bit, to forge the inside at the same time. I'm going to turn it around 180 degrees. I'm going to do the other side. So I'm going to keep everything nice and consistent. Like so. Flatten everything out. Take these colder temperatures, just work down a little bit more into this colder temperature. Not hitting hard, I'm just dressing. Making everything look nice and smart. Whatever I do on one side, I turn it round and I do the opposite side. Try to keep everything nice and symmetrical. Looking nice and tidy. Should have something that looks a little bit like that. Right, now to make it look like a bowl opener. Very easy at this point to get carried away. Um, I'm just holding it onto the anvil and I'm just tapping the back of the bar. Now, I'm going to give it five or six taps, a bit of a brush, and have a look. It looks okay to me. Now, one of the things I like to do is I like to flatten it down when it's at this point. So I've got a bit of a chamfer going that way and I can see already that I need to just give this, I'm going to hold my hammer in a T-shape, just give this corner a tap like that. And I'm basically, oh, a bit far. All I was doing there was just brushing it across but giving it a bit of a tap at the same time. That's basically your bottle opener. Now I'm going to take a round nose punch give it a bit of a crack there and that's going to give me the material I need uh, in order to make the clip. So I'm going to do that next. I think I told you guys a little bit of a porky. I said the next job to do is uh, the clip, but I'm not going to do the clip. I'm just going to uh, neck this in. I'm going to come about, oh, I don't know what, is that half a mil? About half a mil from the, where the bottle opener starts, where the ring starts. Uh, not half a mil, five millimetres say about a quarter of an inch, and I'm just going to start putting in these fullers. And the reason I'm doing that there is because this is going to be our transition into the skeleton's rib cage. I hope. So I'm just going to do a few of those here with this. Now, I'm doing this now because sometimes this just pinches up the bottle uh, where the clip goes ever so slightly, and it can look a bit messy. So I don't want that to happen, and I'm going to be cold here, but that's okay. Right, that's looking really tidy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, just flatten that down and bring this fuller in a bit deeper. Okay, let's do the clip. Now, I tapered one side down, so that's the top of the bottle. That's where I want the clip to be. So 
So I'm just going to place the uh, bottle opener between my legs and then going to just put a dot just behind where the clip would be. And the reason for this is it pushes a little bit of material into the center of what will become the clip. And then I'm just going to come forward a bit using the same round punch. I'm just going to make that nice clip like so. So what I've done here is pulled the clip out. I've also put two sets of fullers in here. Now this is going to become the rib cage of the skeleton and in order to get this in a bit more what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over the edge here uh, and I'm going to just forge this in a little bit hopefully creating a little bit of a taper and then using the round side of my hammer I'm just going to draw that out and just give this bit a bit of body. So that's our next job. Okay, I don't think this needs to be forged very much. I'm just coming in on an angle, just a little bit of an angle. Just like so. All we're doing is just matching up those sides. So it nice and tidy. And then using the round side of my hammer, I'm just going to start pulling the out. and flat. Back in the fire she goes. I'm not trying to go too mad here, but I am trying to make this bigger than, well, I say bigger, I don't want to be much bigger. I do want it to look a little bit more ribcage shaped at least than, than the head. Lovely, that's looking pretty good. We should have something that looks a little bit like that now. Put some more detail in that rib cage, but I need the tools. So uh, I'll send you over to Dan, who's waiting for you at the grinder. Uh, to um, show you what to do next. Thanks Dan, you're doing a great job. We've allowed these to normalise now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start grinding up the faces. Now, I'm going to use an angle grinder for this, I don't have any other facilities for grinding. Um, and uh, I'm going to grind two sides, I'm going to grind the impact side, which uh, we're going to bring to a little bit of a um, a little bit of a dome, because the domes allow us, when we strike in funny angles, it allows to drive the impact straighter and we're also just going to tidy up these faces. Um, so uh, I suggest you wear a mask and you protect your eyes and ears. Um, if you don't, it's not my fault. <laughs> that some things aren't simple. Um, I've really enjoyed making this video and I'm really enjoying using the new software that I'm editing on, but I've got like 40 minutes of footage already, so unfortunately I'm gonna split this video into two pieces. Um, we'll literally be making the rest of this, uh, this one in the next part of the video, so it'll be quite detailed, um, hopefully, um, and hopefully having two 20, 22, 24, 25 minute long videos is uh, more desirable than having uh, one great big hour long video that no one will watch. Um, <laughs> so, um, just so you know, it works, which is lovely, it's a really nice bottle opener. I don't know if you've seen it yet, I'll make sure that um, there's some images of it in the next episode. Um, and uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed making this, so thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are a subscriber, remember to ring that bell for notifications. That'll let you know every time I make a video. And I sporadically make videos. I'm supposed to make them on a Tuesday and a Thursday, 
that happens once in a blue moon uh, because there's probably going to be one Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday at this rate. Um, like I said, new software, editing really well, I think the picture quality is going to be much better this time round. And um, that's everything, so thank you for joining me. I'll leave a link up here to um, a video which relates to this video from Penny, uh, another video down here for Jason. This here is my Patreon, and this one down here is the uh, subscribe button. Thanks for joining us, guys. Bye-bye.